Crypto has its own secret language. Scroll social media and you'll see it everywhere. Buy the dip, laser eyes on profile pics, and people screaming H-O-D-L like it's war. If you've ever thought, what the heck are they saying? You're not alone, because here's the truth. If you don't speak the language, you can't play the game. Today, I'll break it all down, simply. By the end of this video, you'll understand the words, the culture, and the risks. And here's the twist. Once you learn the language, you'll realize crypto is not just money, it's a movement. Let's start with the big question on everyone's mind. Section one, what is cryptocurrency? At its core, cryptocurrency is digital money. But here's the catch. It's not issued or controlled by any government. Think of it like digital gold, scarce, hard to fake, and valuable because people believe in it. All right, we've defined what crypto is, but how does it actually run? Section two, how does cryptocurrency work? Enter the blockchain. Picture a giant Google Doc that the entire world can see, but no one can erase or secretly edit. Every move, every transaction is written there forever. Quick example, Alice sends Bob $5 in crypto. She signs the transaction with her private key. The network checks the math, confirms she owns the funds, and records the transfer in a new block. No bank call, no business hours, just a permanent, time-stamped entry anyone can audit. Sounds perfect, right? But here's the catch. How do we actually make sure no one cheats the system? Section three, mining and staking. Two different systems to secure the blockchain. First, mining, also called proof of work, Bitcoin system and also used by coins like Litecoin and Dogecoin. Imagine millions of computers buying lottery tickets every second. The winner adds the next block and earns new Bitcoin. Super secure, but it guzzles electricity. For perspective, running the Bitcoin network uses about as much electricity as a small country like Switzerland. Second, staking or proof of stake, Ethereum made the big switch in 2022 becoming the largest network ever to move away from mining. Other blockchains like Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot were already built on this system. Instead of noisy machines, people lock up coins as a deposit. The network randomly picks from them to verify transactions. If you play fair, you earn rewards. And here's the impact. Ethereum's move to proof of stake cut its energy use by more than 99%. So, which system is better? Well, it depends. Each has its own trade-off. Think of it like this. Proof of work trades energy for security. Proof of stake trades locked funds for efficiency. All right, the blockchain is secure, but how do you actually hold your crypto? Section four, wallets. Hot versus cold. To use crypto, you need a wallet, but not the leather kind, a digital one. Hot wallet, an app on your phone, always online. Super convenient, like keeping cash in your pocket. But if your phone gets hacked, that cash can vanish. Cold Wallet, a small USB-like device kept offline. It's like a safe at home, slower to spend, but far harder to steal. Real world example, in 2022, hackers stole hundreds of millions of dollars from online wallets in a single attack. That's why many long-term investors eventually move their funds into cold storage. Hot wallets are for spending. Cold wallets are for saving. Passwords protect accounts. Wallets protect kingdoms. So you've got a wallet, but what exactly are you holding? A coin or a token? Section five, coins versus tokens. This confuses almost everyone. Coins and tokens aren't the same. Coin, it's like building your own house, independent, standing on its own. Examples, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Token, it's like renting a room in someone else's house. It works, but depends on another system. Example, NFTs for unique digital assets like art and collectibles that run on blockchains such as Ethereum. Simple rule, coins own the house, tokens rent the space. Now that you know the difference, let's look beyond Bitcoin itself. Section six, beyond Bitcoin. When people hear crypto, they think Bitcoin. Fair, it was first, 
and it's still the giant. But today there are thousands. Think of it like this. Ethereum leads smart contracts, Solana and Cardano chase speed, and Dogecoin proves even memes can move markets. Here's the catch. Most projects disappear. Crypto is Darwinism in real time. Only a few survive. All right, but what about a crypto that doesn't swing wildly in price? Section 7. Stablecoins. Digital Dollars. Ever heard of USDT or USDC? These are stablecoins, cryptocurrencies designed to always match the value of one US dollar. Think of them as digital $1 bills you can send across the world instantly, 24-7. They sound reliable, right? Well, not always. Remember Terra USD in 2022? It collapsed and erased billions overnight. Digital dollars are supposed to be steady, until they suddenly aren't. Here's the key, not all stablecoins work the same way. Some are backed by real dollars in the bank or US government bonds, like having a vault of cash. Others are backed by extra crypto locked away as insurance, like holding two coins for every one you issue. And a few depend only on computer rules to keep balance, like juggling without a safety net. The first two models tend to be more resilient, while these rule-based designs have failed before. Always check what's backing a stablecoin before trusting it, because in crypto, even the safe zone can carry hidden risks. So now you know what crypto is and how it works. But where do you actually buy it? Section 8. Exchanges. Where you buy. So where do you actually buy crypto? On exchanges like Coinbase, Robinhood, or Cash App, basically online stores for digital money. But here's what people often miss. Fees. Like buying a $10 item and secretly being charged $10.30. Exchanges hide them in trades or withdrawals. Gas fees. Blockchains themselves charge you, like toll roads. On Ethereum, they can get expensive. On Solana or Polygon, it's often just pennies. That's why many start on simple apps. As they learn, they often move to exchanges with lower fees or better tools. Some even explore decentralized exchanges, DEX, where trades happen directly wallet to wallet, like trading baseball cards with a friend instead of going through a shop. The upside? You always keep control of your coins. The risk? No customer support if you make a mistake. The tech is one side of the story. The other is the culture. Section 9. Slang and culture. Crypto isn't just tech. It's a culture with its own slang. HODL. Born from a drunk typo in 2013, it became the rallying cry for holding through crashes. FOMO. Fear of missing out. That itch when everyone brags about gains and you feel you must jump in, usually right at the top. DYOR. Do your own research. Don't ape into a coin just because your buddy swears it's the next doge. Advanced slang? Whales. Investors so big they can move entire markets. Rug pulls. When a crypto project suddenly disappears and the creators run away with investors' money. The culture is half the fun. Crypto Twitter, Reddit forums, and Discord groups create memes faster than news outlets. Sometimes the memes even move markets. Remember when Elon Musk tweeted about Dogecoin? Prices spiked overnight proving jokes can be as powerful as headlines. Culture is fun, but in crypto, safety isn't optional. It's survival. Section 10. Staying safe. Your seed phrase, those 12 or 24 words, are the keys to your entire kingdom. If you lose them, there's no bank, no recovery. Once they're gone, they're gone. And remember, hackers don't need your wallet. They just need your words. Passwords can reset, seed phrases can't. Now, let's face the truth. Crypto can make millionaires or break them. Section 11, risks and rewards. Crypto is both a rocket ship and a roller coaster. Yes, Bitcoin went from less than a penny to over $60,000, but it's also crashed 80% more than once. For some, that volatility feels like chaos. Every dip looks like disaster. For others, it feels like opportunity. Every crash looks like a sale. It all depends on your patience and time horizon. Real world example. In 2017, Bitcoin hit nearly $20,000. A year later, it was under $4,000. By 2021, it had climbed above $60,000. Same asset, three very different stories depending on when you bought. Golden rule, high risk, high reward. Never invest more than you're willing to lose, 
or you'll learn that rule the hard way. Crashes don't kill wealth, panic does. So next time someone shouts HODL, FOMO, whales, or stable coins, you'll know exactly what they mean. Because understanding crypto now puts you ahead of most people. And be ready when the next boom comes. Crypto isn't just hype, it's money with its own language. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment. What's the first crypto term that ever confused you? And don't miss the next episode. Five fast ways to earn with crypto. Beginner-friendly strategies to see your first rewards quickly.